Hey guys, Max Soapy Queen here, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Coliseum. So in the last episode, I think I got this right. I don't know for sure, but I believe we were fighting a guy with two whale lords, <laughs> um, and we ended up ending off the episode. I said I was going to fight the guy with the whale lords. And then I was going to look and see if I could find this, uh, I think we're looking for the blue cypher peon guy, I believe. Uh, and I figured out off screen that I had to leave the under and I actually, ha actually have to travel to be able to get this PDA message here to pop up. And then we can use the PDA message to follow where this guy is. Um, so that's how we're going to get our next shadow Pokemon. Basically, we needed to go somewhere so we can get the PDA message from Marcia. So it appears criminals are gathering at the shadow Pokemon lab again. There's more people and, um, oh, there's more. People have seen a cypher peon in a gaudy blue outfit with a shadow crocodile. I wonder what's up. So I believe this is the last shadow Pokemon that we do have to capture um, because we are getting some emails from Net, I think, as well, saying that we need to help out with catching the shadow Pokemon and then he's listing off some different ones that show up later of course you know um, like the big boss and the mayor that we took on the psycho mayor who had the Tyranitar and stuff if you weren't able to catch those Pokemon they're basically giving you a chance to do it all again here in the I mean I guess this would be called the after game so they're giving you another chance to complete it um, which, for us, since we've captured everything, and I'm believing we're we're doing everything right now, we're on the right track, um, because of the Cypher Peon Lady is here to stop us. So, I think we're on the right track now. I think we've caught everything except this Croconaw. I think the is the last one, because we've caught all the Pokemon up to this point, and then um, we caught all the legendaries that were out. The only one that we weren't able to catch, of course, um, was the um what you want to call it i'm trying to think it's 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 just throwing just going through the mind the starters starters yeah <laughs> it's going through the mind i just i lose it every now and then i just get focused on something else and my brain goes 50 different directions uh, about what i want to say because i have a ton of stuff that i want to say and then I literally can't remember all of it, so. Basically, we've caught every Pokemon up to this point. The only thing that we have not caught is the uh, starters. Because in the beginning of the game, they only let us choose one. And we chose to get Quilava. So, I believe it was Bayleaf and Croconaw were the other two. We decided against those um, because we wanted to go with Quilava. Because I usually will pick Croconaw or Bayleaf to begin with, so I thought I would do it a little bit different. Plus, you don't get too many fire types in this game. Or, you know what, for any game, really. Early game, you don't really get too many fire types, so I thought it would be easier to just have a fire type on the team. So I picked them, and then once you pick your starter, then your other starter, the other starter choices are gone away. So, now we get the opportunity to collect those that we weren't able to get which would only be the two, Bayleaf and Crocodile. So once we get through the Shadow Pokemon Lab area, which I'm assuming we're going the right way, considering uh, we ran into a Cypher Peon lady. Uh, but once we get through this, this area here, we'll be able to catch the Crocodile, and then maybe we'll get some kind of ending to this. Um, I want to end the series because we, I mean, we pretty much finished it. Like I said, we pretty much finished the series. Uh, the only thing that we didn't do was capture the two starters and then we also saw at the beginning of the game, like the very first scene, was them capturing the Shadow Lugia. So obviously I think the last thing to do would be to capture the Shadow Lugia. It only makes sense. So that's what I'm trying to... I'm trying to figure out, basically, is what I'm trying to determine, is do we need to capture the Shadow Lugia to finally complete the game? Would that be like a full completion? Or are we good? <laughs> like, I don't know. 
I know we saw the credits, and normally when I see the credits in the game, I'm kind of done with the game, and I'm like, okay, we're ended, we completed the game, because most of the time I'll do like a Nuzlocke form, and wait. I know this is off topic again, but they're using Crunch. Why has Umbreon not learned Crunch? Hello? We have had Bite this whole entire time, and I said, I don't think this was the generation that introduced Crunch. And it was such a shame that we were not able to use Crunch. This whole entire time we've been able to use Crunch and it just didn't learn it? Seriously? Why doesn't Umbreon get Crunch? I have Bite, why did I- <laughs> Am I not high enough level? Maybe don't get it to like level 60 or something? I don't know, but that is very strange. Hello? I should have Crunch right now, I would be destroying these guys. I mean, Espeon has Psychic. Why can't Umbreon have Crunch? It just makes total sense. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I guess maybe we'll see if we get it at level 60, but like literally right now all I'm working with is Bite. That's kind of frustrating. Uh, but getting back on topic of what I was saying earlier, uh, once we finish the game, like the credits roll and stuff, I mean to me it's pretty much over, right? So since I don't normally do like Nuzlocke's, and stuff on games that I haven't really played through before. If this was like a Nuzlocke and we had got, gotten through it and we got to, through the credits, the Nuzlocke would be over because we, we beat the game. So there wouldn't be a point to go on after the credits. But since we're doing this game as like a single thing where, um, where it's just, it's just going through the game and it's not a Nuzlocke, and it's kind of like a completion type thing. Do I continue on after the credits or not? And I decided to continue on because there was more story. It was basically telling us, hey, here's these last few mods that you need to catch in order to complete the game, I guess. Since they don't have like wild Pokemon, there's no like Pokedex type of situation. So I think the only thing that we really can do at this point would be to catch Shadow Lugia, because once we catch Crocodile, what what is left in the game? Why would they have a whole entire game revolve around this one Pokemon that you see at the very beginning, and then you never see it ever again? Like we saw Ho-Oh, right? So why shouldn't we see Shadow Lugia? And capture we can capture Shadow Lugia, because obviously they gave us the Master Ball for a reason, right? To be able to catch a Legendary Pokemon. Why else? Uh, that's what I'm assuming. But why would they make it the after game where you have to do this? I don't know. It just seems kind of weird to me. It seems weird. Like, I I don't get it. I guess that's maybe the reason why this game didn't do as good. I don't know exactly what the game did as far as sales and stuff, but it just seems like if people like this game so much that they should have redone it a long time ago, but I don't know, I don't understand, like, you start the story with this Lugia, who's the main, uh, main thing in the story, and you're not able to catch it in the main part of the story, then what's the point? <laughs> oh, jeez. I just sneeze first, <laughs> or I complete my sentence, I guess. I don't know, it just kind of, kind of seems a little weird to me. The way that they did the story like this. Um, but I'm assuming once we finish all this stuff, then we'll basically have everything wrapped up. And we can go ahead and um, complete it by catching the Lugia. I, like I said before, I, I have not played this game. Uh, I played it up to probably... I think the farthest I've gone that I've said was... Up to the part where you battle Nascor, Nascor, whatever his name was, uh, at the at the, the tower area, and I always kind of wasn't able to get past that part. So being able to finally go past that part was completely new to me, and I'd never seen it. I didn't realize that was the end of the game right there. So it was just kind of confusing to kind of see that, to see that they uh, they did it that way, because Ho Oh shows up at the end. Um, and then it's kind of like, well, okay, 
what now? Because we saw the Lugia, but now the credits have rolled. I've beaten the game, but I still haven't caught this Lugia that was available at the beginning of the game. Are we just supposed to forget about it? And I know I'm kind of like rambling about the same subject over and over again, but it is just kind of a little confusing. So I guess that's why I'm just trying to figure it out as we go along. All I know at this point right now is that I am supposed to be going through this shadow Pokemon lab and getting to the end and then fighting, I'm guessing, a Cypher Peon member. And after I fight him, I'll catch the Croconaw. That's all I know at this point. And I also only know that if I'm running into these little grunt peons, then I'm obviously going in the right direction. Because you guys know we've already done this whole entire area. We already have been through here quite a few times, so we, we clearly know what's what to do. And we've beaten everybody in the air in this area. The Shadow Pokemon Lab, or not Shadow the Snagum hideout we hadn't been to before, so that one took a little bit longer to get through. This one here should not take us that long to get through. I at least don't think it should. But you know, you know how it goes with these games. There's always something to there's always something there to mess you up a little bit. But now that I'm thinking about it, that kind of does really make me mad, mad. Like we're almost level 60 on Umbreon, and we don't have Crunch, and Crunch is in the game. Like I just assumed Crunch wasn't in the game. Because why have an Umbreon that's a Dark type be able to know Crunch, but yet I don't learn Crunch? Like Espeon has um. Espeon has Psychic, and literally every Pokemon we're running into now has Crunch. Malwell has Crunch, Torpedo had Crunch, so like what the heck? <laughs> Why am I not able to use Crunch? That just kind of annoys me. Like seriously, can Umbreon really not learn Crunch in this generation? I don't know all the technicals about that, but I would assume that it could, considering it was like one of the very few dark types that are actually in this generation. I don't know, that kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Kind of just wondering about that. Really, really wondering. Because now that we're up in the higher levels, they're using better moves, of course. Crunch being one of those. Maybe I just need to look it up. Maybe it's just something that I'll figure out whenever I get to that certain point. Did we ever come across a person who was like a move tutor? Maybe we just need to go to like a move tutor or something? I don't think so. I mean this game isn't like the other games. So it's obviously not uh, obviously not anything with like catching Pokemon and normal like normally going through the Pokedex and all that stuff. So I don't know. Just kind of seems con confusing to me a little bit. Not really understanding that part there. So that'll be something that I'll tell myself that I need to look up off screen, and then I end up I won't end up looking it up off screen because I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> that is usually the way it goes with me. Like, I always forget to look things up off screen or do things that I say I'm gonna do off screen. I always forget to do. I don't know why, I just do. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of this blah blue here. I think a side beam should do it. Yeah, it should. Okay. I don't want to have to go back and heal up our Pokemon every single time, but I think I mentioned this in like one of the past episodes. I don't remember which one it was. Uh, I talked about how we're going to work our way back, so once we get these Pokemon on our team right now ready to have their hearts opened up, then, um, aren't you a dark type? I can't remember if you're a darn dark type or not. I guess we'll check it out. Okay, it's not. Um, but yeah, once we get everyone all where they need to be as far as their hearts are concerned that are on our current party, we're gonna make our way backwards and we're gonna start with the Pokemon in the back of the PC and trying to open their hearts. That's why I have Metagross on the team right now. Not only is it just a strong tank that we can have that I know will take hits, um, it's useful to have on the team because we're gonna open its heart as well. And the higher level they are, I think the harder it is to open their heart up. Um, so. I wanted to work our way back. Considering how high leveled everybody is here, 
it's gonna get harder for us to kind of um, get through these areas without having to go back every single time because of our level gap and our level difference. Since Espeon and Umbreon are kind of like our only ones that we're having to use at this point, since they're like our highest level. So right now we will we'll take Stantler back since Stantler is ready to have its heart unlocked. Um, but instead of going ahead and putting on someone from the first box onto the team, we'll put someone from the second box that we've caught recently. Um, that way we can still have some strong levels. Because if you can see here, where we stopped at was uh, Entei here. And our next one would have been Sneasel that we would have put on the team. But I didn't want to put Sneasel on the team um, because it's not at the right at our levels. It's level 43. So what I'm going to end up doing is putting it back here. I think we're going to do it like this. Actually, instead we'll do it like this. Because we'll, we'll still... Actually, no. No. We'll do it like this. I remember now. We will switch everyone around. I want to keep them in the same order that we caught them in. So we don't mix that up. But I also want to continue from the back forward. So our next team member is going to be Tropius, I believe. It would have been Bayleaf. But I am not going to use the Bayleaf on the team because I think it's level 30. Yes, it is level 30. Okay. So I'm not going to use the Bayleaf on the team. We're going to go with our next one here, which is our level 49 Tropius. So we'll add Tropius to the team. And then after Piloswine's heart gets opened up, we will put Piloswine back in the PC. And then we will get out Absol, which will be our next one, our level 48 there. So that's the way we're going to be doing it from now on that way we can get everyone's hearts opened up um, and still be fighting like the same leveled people and have around the same levels as everybody else so we don't struggle as much um, it's good I, I can pretty much go ahead and get the rest of them their hearts opened up if I go and fight the um, the people, I believe it's the ones in the square in Pride Town. That's where I did a lot of my grinding. I can go back and fight them and get the shadows lowered down because they have around level 30 somethings. So I figured that'll be a pretty okay level to train the shadows and get their heart meter lowered down. I could do that as well, uh, but it just didn't seem like it was something that I should be doing right now because um, we're pretty much, like I said, we're pretty much at the end of the game anyway, so there isn't really a point to it, unless I wanted to do it for my sake. I guess I can. Maybe that would be something that we do at the very, 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 very end. So, like, now we're almost finished with the game. Um, but, like, when we finish our last episode, so, like, let's say we catch the crocodile, we get a message from him saying, um that we're good to go you don't have to worry anymore you've caught all the shadow pokemon you did everything please enjoy your time now you are free to go and they say you know kind of like explore everywhere do whatever you want now you're good uh once that happens we will come back maybe in the future maybe like months later or however long later it's going to be whenever i'll be able to get their their little heart things lower down or whatnot. We'll come back in the future and we will check them out, unlock all their hearts, and see what happens. Maybe we'll get something for it or maybe not. I don't know. I'm just assuming everything will be okay if we do it that way. Hopefully. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to see. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to Psychic and I'm going to Surf because that Rhyhorn is doing a lot of damage to my team. This should take out Masquerine and then the Surf should do some big damage to the Rhyhorn. I don't know if it's going to take out Rhyhorn or not. 
but it should do some good damage. Although we are level 40. It's level 57. Ooh, nice, nice. I didn't think it was going to actually take it out, but it did, so that was good. I know it's not going to do anything to Grovile, that's fine. I'm not really concerned about that. Um, we're just going to use Gust. I know it's not going to do anything. Uh, I'm just going to rely on Espeon here. This is really going to be annoying though, because I think I'm going to need to go back and heal up. Because we did lose Palaswine, and Palaswine's heart is almost opened up. I really would like to use it and get it done so that we can trade it out for someone else on the team. But I feel like we're really close. You know what, we'll do this just for one more battle. Just so we can see if we're going the right direction. I'm pretty sure we are. I just need to make sure... Yeah, okay. Just need to make sure which way to go. Because we should be close to the end and then we'll get to that, that uh, Eon guy and we'll be able to battle him and catch the crocodile. One thing that I'm actually glad about though is that all these team members that we're fighting actually don't have um I'm glad they actually don't have a bunch of shadow Pokemon I feel like that would be just so annoying after you've pretty much completed the game to have to go through the game again and catch even more shadow Pokemon it's like technically we pretty much took down the leader of this whole shadow Pokemon business thing so we really shouldn't be having to fight these guys, but, you know, then it wouldn't really be a video game, I guess, if you didn't have a goal or something that you had to do in order to complete a certain task. Well, I guess we will stick with it. And Delcaddy's gonna use Roar on who? Of course, on Espeon. Okay. And now Umbreon's direct out. Alright. Okie dokie. Well, I'm just going to bite, I guess, and since I don't have crunch, I will go ahead and rely on Umbreon to get some flinches or something. And no flinch. Okay. Yeah, we are going to have to definitely go back and heal up after this. Uh, because, well, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think we'll be okay. We can... We can heal up with some potions. I think I bought some potions. I'm pretty sure I did. I know I ended up with um, a little bit of money at the end of the game. So maybe I might possibly have enough to sustain me to heal up myself because I don't want to lose track of where I'm going because I feel like I'm going to take one of these elevators and I'm going to go the wrong way. And then I'm going to forget which way I went. So let me see if I have some healing items in my little uh, bag here. Because we really, yeah we have hyper potions, we really only need to heal up Espeon. Not really too concerned with healing up um, Suicune or anything. Because if anything we'll just send out Tropius and uh, Metagross. So I'm hoping this is the right direction. Hoping, I think it is. There's no alarm blaring, but here I am. Anyway, but here I am anyways. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the right direction. Okay. I want to kind of limit the going back and healing so much. Like we did in the last um, few episodes when we were in the Snagum hideout. Uh, because that ate up a bunch of time that we could have went through this. Like I spent, I think I did like two episodes in the Snagum hideout, two or three, because it literally took us so long to actually get through that area. So I'm gonna try to limit going back and healing up as much as possible. They did happen to have some pretty strong Pokemon but I think with now with like Espeon and Umbreon being the level that they are, I think we're pretty we're pretty good. We're okay to just continue on with the team that we have, and when we get the chance, we will heal up. I think they changed that in in uh, XD Yellow Darkness. I think. And don't quote me on that because again, that's another one of those games that I didn't play all the way through. 
But I think they might have did that. They either they either fixed that or they fixed um they fixed the saving. I'm pretty sure they fixed saves. Uh, because the save portion for this game, you have to find a PC to be able to save anytime you want to save the game. Um, but for XD, I think they put it in the PDA area. So I think you won't have to worry about that. You can just go through the game and if you need to save at any point, you can save. Which is good. Like, I'm so glad they did that because there's been so many times in this game where I've just been like, I need to save really bad and I haven't been able to save. So, I use the, the save states a little bit more and relied on them a bit more. Actually, I use so many of those that I'm pretty sure I have no more save states. I think I used all of them. Maybe there was a couple left, but I know I used a lot of them. Okay, this is not going exactly how I planned. We've already lost our big hitter. The Swallow is using Fly, which is not going to be good because if it uses Fly on Tropius, which I'm guaranteeing it's probably going to do, uh, Tropius is going to go down. Oh, it actually went for Espeon. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought it would have went right for the Grass type on the field. Um, but okay, never mind. Although Shadow Rush is ser seriously not doing it. I'm not doing anything at all, and this Kecleon is becoming a problem. Especially with Aerial Ace and Strength and all those different moves that it has. But I really want to take out the Swallow first. I'm, a <sighs> I'm gonna Toxic the Kecleon. And I'm gonna Shadow Rush the Swallow because I. I pretty much had a feeling that Swallow was going to fly uh, into the air, so <sighs> really, why did we have to miss Toxic? Of all things, why did we have to miss Toxic? I basically only have Umbreon left, and I can't even use Toxic because it missed. Jeez Louise, that would help so much considering that we don't I have very much help from Tropius here because it keeps going into shadow mode and now it's dead. Alright. You guys really like me to have to go back and heal, don't you? When I said I didn't want to do that, you made me have to go do it anyway. Because now I'm down to like literally two Pokemon. Ugh. So annoying. Why couldn't it just be simple? Why does it have to be annoying? Okay, so I'm going to say that Swallow is going to fly again. So this time I'm going to focus Kecleon again. And you know what? I'm just going to go for a bite. Because we need to get some damage off on this thing. I think me biting it will turn it to a dark type. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Color change, change to dark type. And then Metagross, of course, is going to do nothing. Because it's going to go into hyper mode. Nice. Nice, Spinnacross. Nice. And here we are, almost 30 minutes in, when I wanted to end off the episode. And I didn't want to make this this whole part of the Shadow Pokemon Lab area be two or three episodes, like the, the Snagum hideout. Literally not going as planned. Not going as planned at all. I think what we'll do is we'll... We'll go through this area here. And then see if he's on the other side. And if he is, we will go back and heal. If not, then I guess I'll have to go back and heal. <laughs> Basically. Why do they have so many Pokemon? Oh my gosh, come on. Seriously. Alright, well we're going to bite the Kadabra. And you know what? We're going to Shadow Rush as well. Because clearly, Kecleon is underground. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't hit it. I knew that I should have took that Kecleon out first. I was thinking, you know what? The Kecleon is going to be any trouble at all. I'll take out the rest of them first and then we'll worry about Kecleon. Of course, it's the problem. Lucky for us though, we should be able to, to uh, take out this Kadabra with both of our Pokemon. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad that wasn't as painful as it needed to be. And please tell me, yes, that's your last Pokemon. Okay, good. 
Now we should be okay. I'm like so lucky we have Metagross on our team. I mean, literally, Metagross has saved us so many times, being as bulky as it is. Actually, having Metagross and um, Umbreon out here has really, really helped because this is pretty much our bulk team members right here. Um, we're not going to be able to do anything. So I guess we're going to just have to wait here. You know, this is actually... This is actually kind of good because I've been kind of noticing from a few of our, the episodes that we've been doing, a lot of our Pokemon haven't been going into hyper mode as of, as of late. So I think it's good that we're finally getting some hyper modes because it, it takes a long time to get those, uh, those last few bars down when you get towards the end because they don't like to go into shadow mode. I guess that's why we haven't been experiencing too much of it yet. But um, it's nice to finally have some go into shadow mode so that we can call them and we can get their their bars lowered down a little bit faster. It just seems like it's taking so long, which I know they're higher level, but it feels like it's taking forever. Okay, so we beat her and the stairs will hopefully take us to this blue guy. I know this is where we found the items and he was... Yes, he is. Oh gosh, I hope he doesn't go right into battle because I needed to heal. Ugh, the data's not here either. Are we supposed to make more shadow Pokemon with it? What? How did you sneak up on me like that? Huh? Don't I know you from somewhere? Like at the mayor's home in Panek? You've been spoiling Cypher's plans all over, haven't you? You're not gonna mess up my- mess my plan up. Oh, dang it. I should have went back and healed. I was- thinking that we were gonna have to do this, but I didn't know for sure. And there's the crocodile that I'm gonna have to catch. Oh. Okay. So, I hope I have a revive. <laughs> because I'm gonna have to revive Espeon, like, right now. Okay, so there's the crocodile that we need to catch. He has four Pokemon. Please tell me I have a revive in here. I do. Okay, I have two revives. No max revives. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna use this revive here on Espeon. And I'm also going to use a Hyper Potion for Metagross's side on Metagross. And let's just see what let's just see what they want to do, basically. I think we should be okay to leave Umbreon out here though. Uh, because the Grumpig is a psychic type, so bite will be super effective and we can take out the Grumpig. And I don't see the crocodile doing anything to us um, because it's level 30. So I do have to be careful though that I don't actually hurt it. Ooh, good. We learned iron defense. You know what? I'm actually going to use that. Um, and I'm gonna boot. I'm gonna basically beef up Metagross here so that it's pretty much untouchable. And I'm gonna rely on Umbreon. Um, to do the work, basically. Since uh, that bite kind of did not very much damage as I thought it would, I think we're going to double team the Grumpig because if I don't hit myself in confusion, then I should take it out. Oh wait, no. I don't want to attack the Crocodile. I want to attack the Grumpig. I should take it out. I should. Should be in the question. And it cannot touch Umbreon. Uh, because it's dark type, so Psychic won't affect it, and then uh, Psychic is not very effective on Metagross, so this is kind of like the good strat to have right now. As long as Metagross can break out a Confusion, which it doesn't. Okay, so this time we are going to use Iron Defense. Because I think another Bite should take out the Grumpig. So I don't want to risk attacking the... Uh, Crocodile with Metagross. So we're gonna use another Iron Defense. I know it doesn't matter because it's using Psychic uh, and that won't be very effective, but um, or no, Psychic is special so it won't matter with Iron Defense. Um, but I still want to have it up in case this person here does have a physical attacker. 
even though our defense is probably sky high anyway. And we'll need to switch into Espeon now since the muck is out here. So I'm going to... I'm going to Iron Defense and I'm going to use Metagross' turn to heal. And then I'm going to use uh, Umbreon's turn to switch out to Espeon. Because the muck can't really do anything to Espeon. But Espeon can attack it for super effective damage and pretty much one shot it. So we're going to Hyper Potion up Metagross here. And we're kind of just going to have a stalling turn is what it's going to be. It's going to be a little stalling turn so that we can kind of get things going here. Muck is going to use Minimize. That is fine. We should be able to hit a Psychic. Should being the right, the, the, uh, the term there. Should. Don't know if we will be able to or not, but we should be able to hit a Psychic and one should be able to take it out. Okay, so I'm going to use Espeon's turn to attack and then Metagross to Hyper Potion up Espeon. And I think we should be good to go. I think we're good now. So once we take out this muck, we should we should have one more. I think I think he'll have one he'll have one more. And then we can go ahead and catch the crocodile. Yay, I'm so happy this is working out. I thought I was gonna have to go back and heal, but you know what? Surprisingly I didn't. That's good. That's good. And the crocodile is doing nothing to us, which is good. Okay, so one Psybeam should take out the muck, and then we'll just Iron Defense <clears throat> with uh, Metagross here. I think once we, yeah, definitely, once we finish this battle, we will definitely end off the episode. I did not mean for this episode to go this long, but I didn't think it was going to take this long to get through this area as well. Okay, so camera is going to be a bit of an issue for Metagross. But, I think we should be okay as long as Espeon can pretty much two-shot the camera up, should be okay. If anything, I could just bring out Umbreon. Um, so I think I'm gonna double team the camera up. No, I wanna see how much a Psychic's gonna do. I'm afraid if it does one-shot that, uh, Metagross is going to end up killing the Crocodile, so I'm just going to keep Iron Defensing. Metagross is our defensive bond, even though every attack he's using is special and it doesn't really matter. Ooh, yeah, that's super effective. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, Metagross is going to go down. That's fine. Um, one more Psychic should take out Camera, and then we can work on Crocodile. Oh. I'm actually excited. I'm kind of feeling good that we've actually been able to complete the whole entire thing. I didn't think we can catch every one of them, but we've caught every one of the Pokemon. That's nice. That's a nice feeling. Catching every one of the shadows. I never have done that before either. Because the last time that I tried to do that, um, I ended up, I don't think I caught Entei. I know for a fact that I don't think I've caught Nintendo. And I don't think I've caught Raikou either. Because uh, this area here was so annoying with the uh, mm, German Toxic. No. This area was so annoying because you had to keep going back and um, healing and say, having to go back to the PC and save, so I don't think I saved before I got to this point here where I had to get to um, catch the Raikou, so I didn't I didn't prepare basically and it got away. I had to just go ahead and take it out because if I didn't I would run out of Pokeballs because I wasn't able to catch it or I'd run out of Pokemon. So it was definitely pretty difficult coming to this part of the game um, for me not this part but the part where you have to catch every one of the Pokemon so I'm very very glad very glad that we were able to get through this area here and actually beat the game and actually catch all the Pokemon it's kind of satisfying all right so we're gonna try to catch Crocodile here um, 
I've got a save state ready and raring to go. But lucky for us, we caught it on the first Pokemon, which is nice. And there we go, we have finally caught all of the Shadow Pokemon. I think. Don't quote me on that, but we'll see what happens after this battle. Alright, so he disappeared. There's a box here that apparently I didn't open, which has TM26 in it. And that is Earthquake. Wow, okay. Jeez, they just give you Earthquake here. And nobody can really learn Earthquake, so there we go. Nice move to have, but no one can learn it. Okay, so we have caught all of the Shadow Pokemon. And now, the only thing left to do is leave this area and see what happens. So let's see. Alright, so we should be able to get out of here from this elevator here. I think this takes us all the way around to the front. Yes, it does. Okay, good. Let's get out of here. We do need to go to a city and heal up anyway. So let's go to a gate village. Oh, we have a PDA. So let's just see what it says real quick. Receive photos. Wes, did you know your PDA can receive not only email, it can also accept digital photos. I'll send one as a, as a text. I hope it reaches you. All right. It did reach me. I got the photo of you and your little shroomish. Um, but I guess that's it. Wow. Okay, so let's go to a gate village. We'll just go to uh, an another place real quick. See if we get another PDA. We did. All right. What do we got this time? Big snack machine. Hi, this is Bit in the Under. There's this freaky rumor going around that Snagum, hi, ho, Snagum Holdouts Snagum Holdouts fixed a big snag machine. Do you think it's true? Can you take a look at into it too, Wes? Okay. Snagum Holdouts. Was that a typo? Does that mean we need to go to Snagum Hideouts? Fixed a big snag machine. Hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, but we're not doing that right now. Because we need to... We need to definitely end off the episode. We have been going on way too long. So I'm going to go ahead and end the episode off here. I'm going to go to the Pokemon Center real quick. Heal up our Pokemon. And get everyone feeling up and ready to go. Uh, but in the next episode, I guess we're going to go to the Snagum Hideouts. And see what's going on there. Maybe they've got a... Uh, a large machine that we'll need to steal. I don't know. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and uh, I will see you in the next one.